Hi, my name is Greg Fell, Director of Public Health Sheffield. Uh, brief situation report and epidemiology of today, the 17th of January. The number of people testing positive and the seven day rate is coming down. It's beginning to come down quite quickly. Um, is that an artifact of the fact that you'd no longer need to do a confirmatory PCR if your lateral flow device positive? Possibly, um, but almost certainly it's actually the numbers, that number rate's actually coming down in almost all, but not quite all age groups yet. Um, so um, so, so you know, we reached a peak of about 2,000 per um, 100,000 people over a seven day period. And it's, it's, it's way down on that this week and I expect it will continue to come down. Um, positivity of those that test the number that test positive, a few weeks ago was 50%, it's now 33%. And again, I think that will go the wrong way. The hospital activity in NHS and social care, what more widely activity hasn't yet peaked, but it's beginning to look like it might be getting there. Um, and certainly relatively short lengths of stay. So most people who are unfortunately hospitalised are probably staying in hospital a lot, lot, a lot shorter times than they have been previously. Um, um, so what I think will happen is that we'll reach a new cruising altitude um, that will be sustained by the, the, as, the as yet unvaccinated group, particularly um, school, school age kids who are the least well vaccinated of all. Um, um, sadly for all of us, we're nowhere near the end game here. Um, we all want this to pack up, the virus to pack up its bags and go home. Um, the virus decides when it's going to pack up its bags and go home, not an artificially uh, imposed end point. Um, so we're not near the end game. Um, I anticipate, as I say, we'll reach a new cruising altitude. We'll probably come down out of orbit and are somewhere in the stratosphere at the moment. Um, I anticipate that we'll reach an, a, a high altitude over the spring and summer. Um, don't know how testing behaviour plays out. Don't know how actual people's behaviour play out over the summer. But I'm anticipating that, that spring and summer will be relatively calm and I wouldn't want to predict what may or may not happen next winter. Um, as I say, we're nowhere near the endemic phase of this yet. Um, if I could say three things, the things that everyone probably needs to do, um, get vaccinated and boosted if you haven't yet done so, there are still lots that haven't. Um, wear a mask in enclosed public places, that has made a difference. And register your lateral flow device test result, positive or negative, because that's the only way we get a decent handle on the epidemiology. So on vaccine effectiveness, lots of lots of questions in my inbox and elsewhere on the, 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 the effectiveness of the vaccine against Omicron. Um, so here's a brief lay summary. Um, uh, so any vaccine is better than none. One dose is so one dose is better than none. Two doses is better than one, uh, and, and th three dose or two dose plus booster is better is best of all. There were fears, fears early on about um, Omicron and immune escape, i.e. the vaccine wouldn't work as well protecting us against severe disease and hospitalisation. That has not played out according to the early fears which is obviously great news um, and the protection against severe illness is holding up pretty well. Um, Omicron is leading to milder illness in many. The emphasis is, is on the er bit of milder. General consensus and general state of the evidence basis for unvaccinated people the impact of Omicron is pretty similar to Delta. Um, Delta hospitalized plenty and killed a fair few. Um, milder does not mean mild and is Omicron still hospitalizing hundreds of people a week. So for, for, for symptomatic illness and severe illness, the vaccine effectiveness is holding up pretty well, actually, in fact, no, really well. Um, so vaccine response to protect us against severe illness of 85% plus, and that's better than, better than we'd hoped for, given the, the early on fears with, 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 with Omicron. For transmission, can I get it? Um, it's still holding up pretty well, but, but not quite as well as the vaccine held up against uh, as, as Delta. So um, probably about 50% effectiveness, but even if the vaccination halves the likelihood of getting infected, they're one, they're odds that I would take, um, and two, played out over a big population, that does have a significant dent in the transmission of the virus. So all up, the purpose of the vaccination programme was to protect, protect people against death and hospitalisations. Always done that, it's done that spectacularly well, and it continues to do that. Um, um, the vaccine is slightly less effective against um, uh, um, the Omicron than Delta, slightly, but in every scenario, it's a stunningly effective vaccination. There's no scenario in which natural immunity is better than vaccine-related immunity. Uh, in every scenario, the risks of infection um, way outweigh the side effects, and there are side effects of this vaccination, but by, by many, many orders of magnitude. Just because it's slightly less effective does not mean it is ineffective, and the third dose 
gives considerable protection to people against the circulating antibodies as we have seen play out over the last couple of weeks. So if you haven't yet been vaccinated, it is never too late. So as of today, the 17th government is changing its approach to isolation so that um, uh, as of today, uh, people who've been self-isolating because of COVID-19 infection will be able to end their isolation after five full days uh, instead of the previous seven days. Um, uh, but the five full days is still on the basis of a negative lateral flow device test. So the rationale is that a shorter isolation period um, allows people to return to work, education, social activities more quickly, um, and that undoubtedly will help workforce shortages in the economy um, and allows children and students to resume their education, which is obviously a good thing. Um, there are some risks. Um, uh, it has to be, you can only end your isolation on the premise of a negative lateral flow device result. Um, it's important that we interpret lateral flow device results carefully, um, certainly in the context of the current epidemiology. If you test positive with lateral flow device tests, it's almost certainly that you have COVID and should continue to isolate. Um, the converse isn't true on account of the sensitivity of the test. So if you test negative, it doesn't mean you don't have the virus. Um, so symptoms is a really, really important um, di 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 distinctor. Um, if you remain unwell after five days, so if you have a high temperature, a bad cough, you should continue to isolate. Um, um, and that, that's important because the, it's the symptoms and the cough that can continue to sp spread, spread the virus, um, even if you've got a negative test, a negative LFD test, test result. Um, so people perhaps shouldn't rush back to work and other activities too quickly. Take the time to fully recover from your illness first before you rush back. Um, I guess it's important that, that so, so for me, would I want to share a room um, who's five days post an infection, who is coughing all over me? Probably not. So um, positive test results, you need to stay in isolation. Negative test results and no symptoms, then you can probably come, back, come out from isolations. But if you've still got symptoms, um, then you uh, sadly should probably isolate until your symptoms resolve.